This is J.P. Morgan Chase's brand new headquarters. Midtown New York City's newest and most innovative super tall skyscraper that'll soon be a household name. And although its design is breathtaking, there's so much more to this tower than meets the eye. Let's explore this awe-inspiring tower and all it will have to offer. New York City has never been shy of skyscrapers. It has eight of the 10 tallest buildings in the country and some of the most iconic structures in the world. From the Empire State Building to the One World Trade Center to the Flatiron Building, the city loves getting high. Standing at 1,388 feet or 423 meters, the under construction JPMC headquarters in New York City is poised to join the same conversation, not only because it'll become the seventh tallest structure in the US, but also because of a few key differences. The 60 story behemoth is slated for completion in 2025, and the building has claimed that it will be the largest all-electric tower ever in the world and integrates some of the most intriguing design and technology that you'll probably ever hear about. And it's slated to cost a massive $3 billion, which we'll get into more later. The story begins back in February 2018, where JP Morgan announced that it would demolish the Union Carbide Building to make way for a structure that was almost twice as tall. The Union Carbide Building was built originally in 1960, and it was a revolutionary structure at the time. Demolishing this came with quite a bit of scrutiny and backlash from many different groups, claiming that iconic buildings and spaces all over the city were falling like dominoes. But from the years 2019 to 2021, the former headquarters of JPMC was completely dismantled. And as an interesting fact, this marked the tallest voluntary demolished building in the world. 97% of materials from the original building were salvaged during this demolition, and much of the material was and is still planned for utilization in the new building. Located in New York City's Midtown Manhattan neighborhood, 270 Park Avenue covers the entire city block, bound by Madison Avenue to the west, 48th Street to the north, Park Avenue to the east, and 47th Street to the south. The lot measures about 80,000 square feet, with a frontage of 200 feet feet on both Madison and Park Avenues, and 400 feet on 48th and 47th Street. To build the larger structure, JP Morgan purchased hundreds of thousands of square feet of air rights from nearby St. Bartholomew's Church, as well as from the owner of the air rights above Grand Central Terminal. As you may be able to guess by the name, air rights refer to legal property interests granting ownership or development rights above the surface level. The zoning envelope allowed for a structure as high as 1,566 feet, but this raised many concerns about the foundation stating that it might interfere with the east side access tunnels and the Grand Central Terminal's rail yards, which are directly underneath 270 Park Avenue. In May 2019, the new building was approved. To obtain approvals, JP Morgan had to commit $40 million to a district-wide improvement fund. Additionally, the company agreed to create a new 10,000 square feet privately owned public plaza in front of the tower. On top of this, JPMC pledged improvements to Grand Central's train shed and the creation of a new entrance to the station at 48th Street. The firm in charge of making this remarkable design is Foster & Partners, a London-based company with a powerful history in the realm of design. They're the architects of Apple's Cupertino campus, London's Gherkin, and the Hearst Tower. And they have, well, I'll just say some pretty intriguing designs in the future. As seen in this rendering by Foster & Partners, the building is made up of rectangular steps, with nine very symmetrical and appealing connected rectangular prisms. One of the interesting things about the structure is the smaller footprint of the base, somewhat resembling the 150 North Riverside Tower in Chicago, the new building is made on the same foundation as the Union Carbide Building. This design will likely allow for a better and more open interchange with the ground, and as you can see from this picture, that looks to be the case. There will be diamond-shaped trusses on the ground level, which will fan out from the sides of the base, making the whole structure appear to stand on stilts, approximately 80 feet or 24 meters off the ground. And as a quick aside, the tower as a whole will be over 100 feet taller than the Empire State Building. The inside of the building will contain a total of 2.5 million square feet of working space, and will have 25% more volume of space per person than its predecessor. Not only will it house more than twice the personnel of the original building at an estimated 14,000 workers, but it will also contain numerous amenities and large spaces illuminated by natural light. An estimated 30% increase in sunlight in the building, plus all of the aforementioned factors, will likely make this a desirable place to work, potentially drawing people back into the office. 
In July 2019, JPMC and MTA entered an agreement to ensure that the demolition of 270 Park Avenue would not hinder the progress of east side access. The initial phase involved the placement of scaffolding around the tower and podium structure on the Madison Avenue side in July 2019. However, by late 2020, only the podium structure had been demolished. Despite this, segments of the new superstructure were assembled on the Madison Avenue side, and the subsequent months marked the assembly of the first steel beam for the new structure. The main tower's demolition concluded by April 2021. This significant development allowed the initiation of construction on support columns across the entire site. By the end of the year, cranes and construction elevators were erected on site. In April 2022, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon announced plans to further consolidate the company's New York City offices at 270 Park Avenue, leveraging the opportunity for half of the staff to work from home part-time lucky them. During the first five months of 2023, construction progress saw the completion of the first two setbacks, surpassing the height of the Union Carbide Building. However, on March 24, 2023, construction came to a halt when a worker fell to their death from the 12th floor. As of 2023, the completion of the J.P. Morgan Chase Building was projected for 2025. By late September, construction reached the fourth tier of the five-tiered structure. And then on November 20th, 2023, a very significant milestone was achieved. The building was finally topped out and it came with a bit of a ceremony. This involved the welding of a beam at the pinnacle of the fourth tier. And some even predicted that the architectural topping out will complete by the end of January 2024. So the project is slated to cost $3 billion in total, although this number hasn't officially been released. This is perhaps just a drop in the bucket, as JPMC generated a record $49.6 billion of profit in 2023. The most polarizing statement mentioned earlier is the fact that the tower states that it will be the largest all-electric tower in the world. Now let me provide some background on this. Foster and Partners claim that this will be 100% powered by renewable energy sourced from a New York State hydroelectric plant. However, being an electrical engineer and covering several large projects like this in the past, I think it's important to state that this is not exactly how electricity works. By claiming or buying the right to use electricity from this source, it doesn't actually guarantee that the power they're consuming is coming from that hydro plant. While no one can directly trace back power from a grid with multiple generation sources, it's a lot more probable that this building will be pulling electricity from natural gas, as it dominates the New York City power landscape by source. While the tower may actually be all electric, it probably isn't as clean as that title makes it sound. On a more positive note, the Design Studio's website claims that there are other benefits to the building's design. Advanced water storage and reuse systems have shown signs of reducing water usage by over 40%, while triple pane glazing on the facade and automatic solar shades connected to the HVAC systems should vastly increase energy efficiency in a building with well above average amounts of sunlight entry. So with all that being said, what do you think about JP Morgan Chase's new headquarters? Despite the criticism, it will undoubtedly be one of the most exciting new buildings in the country this entire decade, both for its impacts to bolster the New York City economy and for its achievements in advancing relative sustainability in modern architecture. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And with all the latest in technology, engineering, and construction, I'll see you next time.